Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm gonna to be hanging some curtains and curtain panels these days are just so inexpensive to buy. It really does make sense to start with a curtain panel. And if you have even the most basic sewing skills, you can totally adjust them to exactly fit your window and the look you want. These ones, for instance, were starting off at $60 for two panels, which is pretty good already, but they were on sale for $18 for two panels. Like you just can't buy the fabric for that cheap and make them yourself. But of course they're quite a bit too long. They're puddling on the floor. Now I know that puddling on the floor is a designer term, but I just think that looks like you didn't hem your curtains. I don't, I don't think puddling should be a thing. So I like the curtains to just touch the floor or float half an inch to an inch above the floor. I'm fine with either of those, but puddling, I don't know, I don't get it. Anyway, the other thing I don't like about these drapery panels is that the casing along the top is just one big open casing. And I guess if you have a really thick curtain rod, that works fine. But I'm just using a thin, regular curtain rod. I just think that this looks so much better than this. Don't you agree? When they fall into individual pleats, I think drapes look so much nicer than when they're just squished together on a regular casing. If you do have those basic sewing skills, you can use them to help decorate your home. You can make cushions for your home, go so check out that video, and draperies. There's all kinds of things that you can sew for your home. So I'm really glad to have you along for the ride today. Let's jump right into this. So you will definitely need an iron and ironing board or ironing surface of some kind. You'll just need some pins, your regular thread, your sewing machine, and if you've got your basic sewing skills, you can totally do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put the drapes up on the rod and see exactly where they fall, and I'm gonna make a mark right at the bottom where it's touching the floor. I'm not gonna be measuring from the top of how long I want the curtains to be. I don't really care about that measurement. What I care about is how much I wanna take off the bottom. So I'm gonna make a mark, or you can just put a pin where you want the curtains to finish. Good, so then here is the line that I marked where it hits the floor. And I have no idea what that measurement is above here and I don't really need to know. All I need to know is how much am I going to cut off the bottom. Good, so I'm folding the curtain in half and I really wanna get these edges perfectly together so that I can just cut it while it's still in half just because I don't have the biggest cutting table here at home. So this space will be fine as long as I've got it folded in half and nicely lined up. The original hem here is three inches. And so I want to leave three inches plus an extra half inch to turn under at that edge. So it's three and a half from there. That's where I want to be cutting. So this is the important measurement from here to the bottom. So this is six and three quarter inches or 17 centimeters. Mark that the whole way across. So I'll be cutting right on that line. The piece that's left over. I wanna be able to make loops to sew onto the back of the casing of the curtain. And I'm gonna just be cutting it right in half. And I don't really need to draw a line here. I can just eyeball it and cut right down the middle. And I'll just cut off the ends. Good. So that's all the cutting I need to do. And now this piece I'll just put aside till after I sew that hem. Okay, good. So there's my original mark and it's three and a half inches from where I cut. So my sewing gauge is set at half an inch and I'll just turn up that half an inch and I'll be pressing that down the whole way across. So funny story. One of my good, good friends doesn't, didn't know how to sew, but she figured that she could make curtains. And she got instructions on a website of how to make these curtains. And the very first step said to make a lin hem on the two sides. She spent the next two hours researching what a lin hem was, and she couldn't find it online anywhere. She phoned everybody that she knows, that knew how to sew. She tried to find out what this lin hem was. Well, it turned out it was a one inch hem. <laughs> okay, so there is my half inch fold. And now I wanna be folding at that line, which is another three inches. So I'll 
And before I move this now, I'm gonna set a few pins in there and then continue my way across. At the ends here, I don't want that corner sticking out. If it seems like there's extra here, I wanna give that a tug and try to get that to press flat without this extending over. Nice, so that whole thing is pinned. Now I would do that to all of the curtain panels that I'm doing. I would get it to this point before I sew, just so all that measuring is fresh in your brain and they all turn out exactly the same. And with that hem all nicely pinned, now I'm just gonna be sewing a line right close to the edge here. I'm gonna keep a hand in behind and holding the fabric a little bit taut. My right hand is staying directly in front of the needle. Whatever you hold right in front of the needle is where you're gonna go. So that's just gonna keep me nice and straight. If I, if I put a little bit of tension on it too like that, it just keeps it moving through nice and straight. So that's what you're aiming for, nice and close to that top folded edge like that. Looking good. All right, before I give it a final press, we're gonna do the loops on the top edge. That strip that I cut off the bottom, it's already folded wrong sides together, like with the good side facing out. And if you have a serger, this is just the fastest way to make this kind of loop. I'm just gonna be serging those edges together. If you don't have a serger, no problem at all. You can just zigzag those edges together. You don't have to sew first and then zigzag. Or if you want to do a more traditional method, you would fold it right sides together and sew at the edge of your presser foot and then turn the whole loop right side out. But I'll just show you this way that I like to use. It's just so fast and easy. Okay, so I'm just gonna serge right down those edges. That was fast. Over at the iron now, these loops are gonna be on the back of the curtain. You're never gonna see them, so I could just press this flat and use it as is. I'm just gonna make it one little bit nicer, and that's by refolding it and pressing it so that that surged edge is right down the middle, and then I'll be able to hide that edge when I attach the loops to the curtain. And so we're making one gigantic long loop and then we'll be cutting it into seven shorter pieces. Okay, so this whole long strip is done, all pressed flat, and that little surged edge is just gonna be hiding underneath. And now what I wanna do is cut it into lengths that are the same length as that top casing. The casing on these curtains is four inches. I can safely say that pretty much whatever width your casing is, that's the length you should cut the loops. If your curtain is a little bit narrower than this one, you might get away with five. Five is actually easier to calculate where you're gonna put them. But I do find with this curtain, it's a little bit wider. It sagged when I just was trying it with five. You wanna have an odd number though. So now to mark where they're going to go, I'll put one pin a little bit in from the edge so that when I center this loop on here, it's not going to be right at the edge. That doesn't look nice when you can see it on the edge. So I'm gonna set that in about half an inch. This pin is marking where the center of that loop will be, about a pinky finger width from the edge. And the same on the other end of the curtain. Good. So now the next part that I'm gonna mark is the center of the curtain. I just have it folded in half and I just wanna mark the center like that. And now if you're just doing five, that's really nice and easy. You would just bring your pins together and you'd mark the center point there between the two. But since I'm doing seven, I need to divide this space, not into two, but into three. So 25 divided by three is eight and a third of an inch. Eight and a third. A third of an inch is not the easiest, but I'm just gonna call that a little bit more than a quarter. Then I'll have seven pins evenly spaced across the top of this curtain panel. Good. And then back to the sewing machine. So now in line with each of the pins, I'm just going to center one of the loops. I've got it facing with the surged edge facing up and centering it right over where that pin is. 
I'm going to leave the tag on just to have the laundering instructions there in the future if I need it. So then again, it's the serge edge facing up and I'm just centering it around the pin about a pinky finger width above the edge of the casing. So now I'm going to be sewing these on with them facing down like that. I'm eventually going to be flipping them up. Does that make sense? I'm going to be aiming to sew right on top of this line that's, that's stitching the casing down. Of course, it's really important to back tack at the beginning and end of each one of these loops. So now for each of these loops, you're going to take the loop and turn down about a finger width and get that to lay nice and flat and straight and you're just going to be sewing at this top edge. When you hang these curtains, if they touch the floor just a little too much, all you're going to do is just come back and sew a second line underneath that first, maybe a quarter inch down, and that'll just lift the whole thing up that extra quarter inch. So when all of your loops are sewn like that, you're done. You're gonna give your curtains a final press, make them look terrific at the bottom edge and the top edge and in between. So then you're done. Awesome, so the drapes are up, they look beautiful. And seriously, that was inexpensive completely easy to do. And isn't that nice to know that you can use those sewing skills to decorate your home in a really affordable way. So it was really nice to have you along for the ride today. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. Thanks so much. You take care.